So, good evening. So, good evening. Let us begin with a prayer. Let us begin with a prayer. Father, we thank you that we can gather here again and that we can um, worship you. Wir danken dir, dass wir hier wieder zusammenkommen können, um dich anzubeten. And we pray that you would please um, pour your cold oil into our hearts this evening. Und wir beten, dass du an diesen Abend dein goldenes Öl in unserem Herzen hineingießen mögest. Please bless us and help us to be attention to us to understand. So, bitte segne uns und helft uns aufmerksam zu sein und dass wir verstehen werden. Und bitte helf Lorenz, als er die Klasse anleitet. Und ich bitte auch, dass du die Übersetzung und auch ähm, das ähm, Technik auch segnen mögest. Und ich bitte um alles in Jesu Namen. Amen. 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 Ausrüstung. Okay, so. Postet die Notes in der Livestream-Gruppe? Ich habe die Notizen in der Livestream-Gruppe gepostet. This evening we want to look at the two Egypts in. The two Babylons. Und heute Abend wollen wir die zwei Ägypten und die zwei Babylons anschauen. Okay, and we know and understand, right, that there are two Jerusalems. Und wir wissen bereits und verstehen, dass es zwei Jerusalem gibt. Uh, one Jerusalem that gets blessed. Also die eine Jerusalem, die gesegnet wird. And the other Jerusalem that gets cursed and destroyed. Right? Und die andere, die verflucht wird und zerstört wird. And I want to show you that this the same applies to. Egypt and Babylon. Okay. Und ich möchte zeigen, dass dasselbe ist Ägypten und Babylon anzunehmen. And I, I'm pretty certain there are more things that I put together tonight here in this. Und ich bin mir sicher, dass es noch mehrere Sachen gibt als das, was ich hier zusammengestellt habe. So was a bit limited on time, but I think it suffices for tonight. Die, die Zeit ist mir knapp geworden, aber für heute Abend glaube ich, das äh, reiche aus. Okay, so let's go. To the heading, the two Jerusalems, just to remind us. So, am Anfang, die zwei Jerusalem, nur zur Erinnerung. And uh, this begins in Galatians 4, verse 21. Das fängt in Galater 4, Vers 21 an. It says, Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye, do ye not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bond woman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise. So there are these two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. Es gibt diese zwei Söhne, Isaac und Ishmael. And then verse 24. Vers 24. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answereth to Jerusalem which now is and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem which is above, which is the mother of us all. Uh, sorry, but Jerusalem which is above is free, which is the mother of us all. Okay, so here we see the two Jerusalems, right? So here can we see the two Jerusalem. Illustrated by the two sons. Dargestellt durch die zwei Söhne. The one was after the flesh, the other was after the spirit. Die eine dem Fleisch nach, den anderen den Geist. Okay, we understand. The Jerusalem that was in bondage was destroyed. Right? Und wir verstehen, dass die Jerusalem, die in Knechtschaft war, wurde zerstört. Okay. So, but the other one receives the blessing because it's the one that illustrates the promise. Aber die andere erhält den Segen, denn das ist die, die die Verheißung erhält. Just finish the rest of it. Also, um das zu Ende zu lesen. It says, For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry, thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath more, uh, many more children than she which hath an husband. 
Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what the saith the scripture, cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Okay, now let's go to Isaiah chapter 19. Gehen wir jetzt zu Jesaja 19. Now we want to look at Egypt and Babylon. Okay? Ägypten und Babylon anschauen. And in this chapter we find Babylon illustrated as Assyria. Und okay. in diesem Kapitel finden wir Babylon, sie wird dargestellt als Assyrien. I mean, Assyria, Babylon is the same. Assyrien und Babylon ist ein und dasselbe. Okay, so Isaiah 19, beginning in verse 1. Isaiah 19, verse 1. It says, um, <coughs> The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. So what do we understand? Where do we mark this here? So, what do we understand? Where do we mark this here? So, what do we understand? Where do we mark this here? It's when he comes on the cloud, it's the punishment of the seventh plague. Wenn er an den Wolken kommt, es ist die Bestrafung am siebten Plage. Typified here, right? Oder ausgeschattet hier. So, and everybody is now warring against each other. Und jeder kämpft gegeneinander. Now verse 3. Vers 3. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, and to the charmers, and to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And the Egyptians will I give over in the hand of a cruel lord, and a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts. So, what is the Lord doing to the Egyptians? So, what tut der Herr den Ägyptern an? Gives them over to Satan, the cruel lord, right? Gibt sie Satan über, also diese grausame Herr. And Satan is who? Und Satan ist wen? Yeah, the destroyer. Der Zerstörer. Okay, so therefore... The Egyptians will be punished, they will be destroyed. So right? deswegen die Ägyptern werden bestraft, sie werden zerstört. Okay, but in the very same chapter, just Aber a few verses later, genau denselben Kapitel, nur ein paar Versen später, we read now something completely opposite to this, to, uh, about Egypt. Okay. Wir können was genau entgegengesetzt über Ägypten lesen. Let's jump down to verse 16. Also in Vers 16. It says, in that day, which day? Welches Tag? Welche Tag? And the day of the Lord, right? Tag des Herrn. So when he brings this punishment on Egypt, also he brings this punishment on Egypt. It says, "In that day shall Egypt be like unto women, and it shall be afraid and fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid in himself, <coughs> because of the counsel of the Lord of hosts." which he hath determined against it. So, God's people are now what to Egypt? So, Gottes Volk sind was für Ägypten? A terror. Ein Schrecken. Where do we see this? Und wo können wir das sehen? Let's go to Deuteronom Deuteronomy chapter 2. Gehen wir zur 5. Buch Mose, Kapitel 2. And let's read verses... 24 to 25. Deuteronomy 2, 24 to 25. It says, Rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Arnon. So they were to cross now a river. So this is an fluss über Köln. Uh, it's like similar then to crossing the Jordan and all the, the Red Sea and so so this river wie crosses. Den Jordan überqueren oder, de, oder den Roten Meer überqueren oder all diese anderen Flüsse. Okay, behold, I have given into thine hand Sihon the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and this land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations, 
that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear report of thee, and shall tremble, and be in anguish because of thee. So, where do you cross, for instance, the Jordan, or the Red Sea? Wo überquerst du den Jordan oder den Roten Meer? Yes, right, the Kluft. So the first group would be here, but the rest here, right? So the first group even here and the rest there. And and according to these verses, what came upon the nations here? Gemäß diesen Versen, was ist es, was über die Nationen kam? Great fear, right? Was es Furcht? So the dread and the fear came upon them. So what's dread again? Schrecken. Okay, Schrecken und Furcht, aber es ist eine Erwartung auf Schrecken eher. Okay, so now let's go to Joshua chapter five. Gehen wir zu Joshua Kapitel fünf. Let's read verse one. Vers eins. There we see the same thought mentioned. Okay. Den selben Gedanke erwähnt sie. Joshua 5, verse 1. Joshua 5, verse 1. It says, And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel, until we were passed over, that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them any more because of the children of Israel. So what happened to the people when they heard that they crossed Jordan? So was geschah mit den Menschen, als sie gehört, dass sie den Jordan überquert haben? Yeah, fear came. Heart melted, fear came upon them. Furcht kam über sie, also den Herzen ist geschmolzen. Okay. What happens when the two witnesses get raised up again? Was geschah, wenn die zwei Zeugen ähm, auferweckt werden? Great fear. Yes. Großes Furcht kommt über sie. Alright, so when we go back now to our notes, to Isaiah 19. So wenn wir zu den Notizen zurückgehen, Isaiah 19. It's just the same thought here in verse 17. Das ist derselbe Gedanke hier in Vers 17. When Judah becomes a terror unto Egypt. Wenn Judah ein Schrecken zu Ägypten wird. And it says it's in that day, in the day of the Lord. Okay. Und es sagt in diesem Tag, also im Tag des Herrn. Yes. Which is the seventh plague. Was der siebte Plage auch ist. Yes. Amen. Okay. So we saw in the seventh plague, Egypt gets punished, but also now the dread comes upon them with respect to God's people. So wir haben gesehen, dass im siebten Plage Ägypten bestraft wird, aber auch hier jetzt den Schrecken über sie kommt bezüglich Gottes Volk. In verse 18. Vers 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan and swear to the Lord of hosts. One shall be called the city of destruction. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. So what shall be there now in Egypt in that day? 19. Was wird in Ägypten sein an diesem Tag? An altar to the Lord, right? Ein altar des Herrn. Okay. Um, now verse 20. Vers 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So who cries to the Lord and who gets delivered here by a savior? So, wer schreit zum Herrn und wer wird befreit durch einen Retter? Egypt, right? So, Egypt now gets delivered by God. Okay. So, Ägypten wird von Gott befreit. Now, let's continue. Verse 21. Vers 21. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord and perform it. So now the, Lord, the Egyptians worship God. Right? So jetzt die Ägypter beten Gott an. And the Lord shall smite Egypt, he shall smite and heal it. And they shall return even to the Lord, and he shall be entreated of them, and shall heal them. So what will he do to Egypt? Was wird der Ägypten tun? Heal it. Yes, he will heal it. Right? Okay, smite and heals it. Okay. 
schlägt und hier heilt sie. In that day, there shall, sorry, 23. Vers 23. In that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptian shall serve with the Assyrians. So who is now also introduced here? So where is here yet auch eingeleitet? The Assyrian. The Assyrian. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt my people, and Assyria the work of my hands, and Israel mine inheritance. Okay? So you have... So two stakes being joined together. Yeah, you have Israel, God's people. Right? Israel, God's folk. But also Egypt and Assyria now become part of God's people. Aber right? auch uh, Ägypten und Assyrien wird ein Teil von Gottes Volk werden. Just church and state is these two. Egypt is the ten kings and Assyria is the... Um, no, maybe not. Uh, uh, but the point I want to make is that you have one Egypt that gets punished, right? Der Punkt, den ich machen möchte, es gibt ein Ägypten, der bestraft wird. But here... Another Egypt, in a sense, gets joined unto the Lord. Okay. Aber hier, in gewissen Sinne, ein anderes Ägypten wird dem Herrn angeschlossen. Yeah, it just shows that there are two classes of worshippers among the Egyptians. Okay. Das zeigt, dass es nur zwei Klassen von Anbetern unter den Ägyptern gibt. Just like with the two Jerusalems. Genauso okay. wie die zwei Jerusalem. So in that day, the day of the Lord, Egypt get punished, but also Egypt will become his people. So an diesem Tag, dem Tag des Herrn, nämlich, ähm, Ägypten wird bestraft werden, aber auch Ägypten wird Gottes Volk angeschlossen. And also Assyria will become his people, it says Und right? auch Assyrien wird sein Volk werden, es sagt hier. Assyria is Babylon, aber right? Assyrien is Babylon. And does Babylon get punished here? Und wird Babylon hier bestraft? And destroyed? Und zerstört? Yes, so one ja. Babylon gets destroyed, another Babylon gets saved. So okay. eine Babylon wird zerstört, die anderen gerettet. Okay. And where else can you see this? Wo können wir das noch sehen? So let's go now to Genesis 47. Gehen wir zu 1. Buch Mose 47. Begin in verse 7. Und wir fangen Vers 7 an. This is now when Jacob came down to Egypt. Als Jakob nach Ägypten herabkam. It says, And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh. And then also verse 10. Verse 10. And Jacob blessed Pharaoh and went out from before Pharaoh. So what did Jacob do to Pharaoh? So was tat Jacob dem Pharaoh? Blessed him. Yeah. Besegnet ihn. So he received the blessing. So okay. er erhielt den Segen. So and when you get blessed, what does it illustrate? Und wenn du gesegnet wirst, was stellt es da? New birth. Yeah, the new birth, the latter rain, right? Das Neugeburt, das Spätregen. So in a sense, illustrates he got saved. So and he represents Egypt. He is this good Pharaoh. Okay. And er stellt Ägypten da, diesen guten Pharao. Yeah, but was there also a Pharaoh that get punished at the same time? Aber gab es auch einen Pharao, der bestraft wurde zur selben Zeit? Yes. Right. So there are many stories in the Bible where Pharaoh gets punished. Right? Es gibt viele Geschichten in der Bibel, wo Pharao bestraft wird. But here. Just to keep it in the same, let's say, time back then, okay. Exodus 14, verse 27 to 28. What did you mean by time? Also? Yeah, in, in a sense, Moses' time, jo Joseph's time was almost time frame. Time frame yeah. was, that, was what? Time frame. The time frame was, small, <coughs> was basically close together. Ah, okay, yeah. der, also der Zeitrahmen von Mose und... Joseph und so, dass die waren nah beieinander. But I mean, there were many years in between you know, these two stories here, but line upon line they're illustrating the same. Also point, es gibt right? einige Jahre zwischen diesen zwei Geschichten hier, aber Linie auf Linie, sie markieren denselben Punkt. Okay. Because you receive the blessing Weil or the curse. Right? Erhältst du den Segen oder den Fluch? Okay. So, and so let's go now to Exodus 14, 27 to 28. So, 2. Buch Mose 14, Verse 27, 28. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, 
and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, there remained not so much as one of them. Okay, so all the Egyptians got destroyed, right? All the Egyptians were destroyed. Okay, so you can see basically one, e one Egypt gets des destroyed, another Egypt gets saved. So you can see that one Egypt gets destroyed, the other uh, die andere gerettet. So what about Assyria? Because we also saw Assyria was then called the work of God's hand. So right? was ist mit Assyrien? Denn wir haben auch gesehen, dass Assyrien würde genannt das Werk Gottes Hand. So let's go to Isaiah 30. Jetzt Jesaja 30. Verse 30 to 31. Die Verse 30, 31. And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard and shall show the light thing down of his arm with the indignation of his anger and with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempest and hailstones. For through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. Who gets punished here? The Assyrian. Right? The Assyrian. So, which is obviously then here, right? Was then auch here is. So therefore you have basically Always the good Egypt and bad Egypt, or okay. evil Egypt. Gutes Egypten or böses Egypten. And the same applies to Assyria or Babylon. Und dasselbe yes. ist Assyrien oder Babylon anzuwenden. Okay. Um, now let's go to Isaiah 11. Gehen wir zu Jesaja 11. Begin, beginning in verse 1. Fangen Vers 1 an. It says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So, what does this now illustrate? So, what does this here? What is upon the stem of Jesse? So, what is auf den Stamm Jesse? Jesses? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. The right? Heilige Geist. So, it's the outpouring of the Spirit, right? It's baptism. Das Ausgießung des Heiligen Geistes. Das ist eben Taufe. Okay. And now verse 3. Verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So what is this illustrating? So what is this here? Da? Yes, but what judgment? Gericht, aber welches Gericht? When will he come to slay the wicked with the lips, with the breath of his lips? So, wann wird er kommen, um den Bösen zu with schlagen? The of his mouth. Mit den Atem seines Lippen oder Wort seines Mundes. Yes, Revelation 19. Right? Das ist Offenbarung 19. It's the second coming. Das zweite Kommen. Yes. So, let's go to Revelation 19. Lass uns dahin, Offenbarung 19. And he comes on the white horse. Er kommt am weißen Pferd reitend. And uh, so let's just read verse 11 and verse 15. Verses 11 and 15, lesen wir. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And then verse 15. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goes, goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should, he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Okay, so what comes out of his mouth? Was kommt aus seinem Mund her? 
Yes, the the sword, right? And he sword. He smites them with it. And er, er schlägt sie damit. Yeah. So, and now let's go also to Second Thessalonians chapter two. Gehen wir auch zur zweite Thessalonicher Kapitel zwei. Um, and it speaks about the man of sin being revealed here. Okay. Er spricht über der Mensch der Sünde, der geoffenbart wird hier. So let's read verse 7 and 8. Die Versen 7 und 8. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Right? So how will the wicked be destroyed? So, wie wird das Böse zerstört werden? Der, der Böse. Sorry? Der Böse. Der Böse. Oder die Bösen. As the wicked is referring ah. to the papacy. Yes. Also, der Böse. Wie wird zerstört werden? Yes, with the spirit of his mouth. Right? Mit der Geist seines Mundes. Okay, in the brightness of his coming. coming. Und das uh, Leuchten seines Kommens. So it's it's the second coming. So right? Das ist das zweite Kommen. Yes. Okay, so it's speaking therefore about this judgment here at the end. So right? spricht über dieses Gericht hier am Ende. So when you go back now to Isaiah 11. So wenn wir zurück zu Jesaja 11 gehen in den Notizen. And um, so we read this down to verse 4. And we have this verse 4 gelesen. And where he comes and smites the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lip, lips shall he slay the wicked. Right? So it's speaking about here. So he speaks about this point here. When he punishes Babylon. When he Babylon bestraft. Yes. Amen. Okay. And now let's continue verse 5. Let's uh, continue so verse 5. And the righteous shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. So, what time is it now? So, welche Zeit ist das jetzt? Time of peace, right? Zeit des Friedens. So. The wolf is not devouring the lamb anymore, and so das Wolf verzehrt den Lamm hier nicht mehr. The leopard, not the kid. Und das Leopard, nicht das äh, Ziegelein. Okay, so and jump down to verse nine. It's verse nine. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. So what is now the earth? So was ist die Erde jetzt? It's full of his glory, right? Full of the knowledge of the Lord. Voll die Kenntnis des Herrn, voll seiner Herrlichkeit. Okay. Now verse 10. Vers 10. In that day, and the day when all this, this judgment will come, and the earth is now full of the glory of God. In diesen Tag, also diesen Tag, wo das Gericht kommen wird, und die Erde voll des Herrlichkeiten des, des Herrn sei. In that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek. And his rest shall be glorious. So this is now when God's people are lifted up as an ensign. Right? So here is where God's folk erhöht werden as a Feldzeichen. Yes, everybody sees this. Can you see that? So first group here, everybody here. Right? Erste Gruppe eben hier und jeder am Ende. And who comes now flocking to them? And wer kommt zu sie strömend hier? The Gentiles. The right? Heidenvölker. And then verse eleven. Vers elf jetzt. And it shall come to pass in that day, and when they are now an ensign, so, yeah, an diesen Tag, wo sie ein Feldzeichen geworden that sind, that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So, where is he now gathering his people from? So, from wo sammelt er sein Volk her? Everywhere. Yeah, from all these heathen nations, right? Und all these heathen nations. So we can see that among those heathen nations, you always have the evil ones so that get destroyed, but the good ones they will be 
together. So we can see that under all these heathen nations, there are the bösen darunter, die zerstört werden, aber all sein Volk, die daraus gesammelt wird. So you always have a good version of this nation and a bad version of this nation. Es gibt immer ein gutes Version dieses Nations und auch ein schlimme oder ein böses Version dieses Nations. Just like two Jerusalems, you have two Egypts, you have two Babylons, you have two Elams and whatever. So, genauso wie du zwei Jerusalem hast, gibt es zwei Ägypten, zwei Babylon und in diesem Fall zwei Elam. Okay, and let's also go to Isaiah 11 in our Bibles because I just remember I should have put one verse more into it. Gehen wir zu Isaiah 11 in unseren Bibeln, denn ich habe ein Vers da hinzufügen wollen. So, let's continue in Isaiah 11 verses 12 to 14. Und wir lesen weiter in Isaiah 11, die Verse 12 bis 14. And it says, And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And so this ensign for the nations is his people. Right? So Feldzeichen der Nation für die Nation ist eben sein Volk. And now verse 13. Vers 13. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim, but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines toward the west. They shall spoil them of the east together, they shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. So who will obey them? Wer wird sie horchen? Yeah, Edom, Moab and Edom, Ammon, Moab, the children of Ammon. Und die Kindern von Ammon. Where else do we see this? Wo yes. sehen wir das noch? Yeah, Daniel 11, so go. Daniel 11. Let's go to Daniel 11. Dann gehen wir da hin. And I remember Jeff, many times he went to these verses here. Okay. Ich erinnere mich öfters, dass Bruder Jeff zu diesen Versen gegangen ist, äh, öfters ist. So, Daniel 11, verse 41. Daniel 11, Vers 41. It's just the verse after verse 40. Okay. And it says, He, the king of the north, the papacy, right? he shall enter also into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. So who get saved. So where wird gerettet werden? These three. Yes. Edom, Moab and Ammon. So right? Edom, Moab and Ammon. But you can also go in the Bible and see many times Edom and Moab and Ammon gets punished. Right? Ganz öfters in der Bibel gehen und sehen, wie Edom, Moab und Ammon bestraft wird. So there are always this good ones of this nation and then the evil ones. So yeah. Es gibt immer die Guten unter diesen Nationen und den Bösen. And yeah. The ones that get saved and the others destroyed. Die eine werden gerettet, die anderen zerstört. Okay. And let's go now to Revelation 21. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung 21. Because that speaks about the holy city. Und hier okay. spricht es über den heiligen Stadt. Let's read verses 23 down to 26. Die Versen 23 bis 26. <coughs> Also in your notes, but you can also go in the Bible. This is okay. auch in die Notizen. Kannst du aber auch in deinen Bibeln schauen. It says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the lamp is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the Kings of the earth to bring their glory and honor into it. So, who will walk in the light of it? So, wer wird in das Licht davon wandeln? These nations, right? Die Egypt, Assyria, Ägypten, Edom, Assyria, Moab, Edom, Ammon. Moab, mm -hmm. Ammon. Because all those that get saved. All diejenigen, die gerettet werden. But obviously, it's not the whole nation that got saved, but always. The good ones. Okay. Aber natürlich ist es nicht der gesamte Nation per se, der gerettet würde, sondern die Guten da. Mm -hmm. 
Also die sind alle Symbole für Babylon. Yes. Die sind verschiedene Völker. So, they're all coming from the world. Right? Sie alle kommen von der Welt her. Okay. Die Welt. So, understanding this, yeah, that there's always a good and then there's an evil illustration of the same nation, okay. so, uh, city. Da wir das verstehen, dass es immer eine gute und eine schlechte Darstellung von derselben Nation oder Stadt gibt. Yeah. I was thinking and I must just look at this, but maybe this is now this is valid. Okay. Ich habe so die Gedanke gehabt und ich muss das natürlich prüfen, aber ich glaube, dass das vielleicht gültig ist. Yeah. Because how many Ninevehs do you have? Denn wie viele Ninive gibt es? You have two, right? Es gibt zwei. I mean, there, there's definitely two, okay? Es gibt auf jeden Fall zwei. Yeah. You mean the one that... Okay. Because you have, when you go to the book of Nahum... Denn wenn du zum Buch Nahum gehst... And let's begin in verse 1. Welche Kapitel? Chapter 1, verse 1. Also Kapitel 1 und Vers 1. It says, The burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. Okay, so this is now the burden on Nineveh. Right? Dies ist jetzt der Bürde auf Nineveh. And then verse 2 it says, Vers 2 sagt, God is jealous and the Lord revengeth, the Lord revengeth and is furious, The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. So, and then he basically gives a message of judgment on Nineveh. Right? Und dann spricht er eine Botschaft des Gerichts auf Nineveh aus. Okay, and yes, jump down to chapter 3, verse 4. Und jetzt Kapitel 3 und Vers 4. It says, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. So Nineveh is therefore a parallel illustration to papacy or Babylon, right? So Nineveh is a parallel illustration to Babylon or the Papst too. Okay, but it says here, for instance, um, yeah, when you just read through it, yeah, you can see that She gets punished. Okay. Also, wenn du das hindurch liest, dann siehst du, dass sie bestraft wird. Die Verse 18 und 19. It says, Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria, because Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. So, right? Nineveh war der Hauptstadt von Assyrien. Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust, thy people is scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathereth them. There is no healing of thy bruise, thy wound is grievous, all that hear, thee, uh, hear the brute of thee shall clap their hands over thee. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually. So, for her bruise there is no healing, it says, right? For her bruise, also bruise. for yes. ihre um, Verletzung gibt es keine Heilung. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, verse 15 it says the fire devoureth. Yeah. Verse 15 sagt, das Feuer verzerrt sie. Okay, and but we saw in Isaiah 19 what will he do to Egypt? Aber wir haben gesehen in Jesaja 19, was wird er mit Ägypten tun? He smites it and heals it, right? Heilt es. Okay, so there was a healing for them. So es gab eine Heilung für sie. And then he also called the Assyrians. Und dann right? hat er auch die Assyrer genannt. Okay. Called, so gerufen. Also hat auch die Erzürer gerufen. Yes. Okay, so, but this Nineveh gets utterly destroyed. Right? Aber diese Nineveh hier wird vollständig zerstört. Because what uh, happened to Jerusalem? Denn was geschah mit Jerusalem? Not one stone was left upon another. Kein right? Stein aufeinander gelassen. And here, let's Maybe it's 
Don't know. Don't find the verse now. Doesn't matter. We also understand Babylon gets also utterly destroyed, right? Wir verstehen auch, dass Babylon vollständig zerstört wird. Okay, there was somewhere a verse that also says it here, but es gibt auch einen Vers, die es hier jetzt sagt. Okay. <coughs> Yes, but um, verse seven says she's laid waste. Verse eight and nine. Yes, okay. So let's just read uh, yeah, verses six to eight. We'll listen to verse six to eight. Says, who can stand before his indignation? And who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. So, yeah, you can see also the rocks. Uh, name one. Chapter one. Six to eight, sorry. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overflowing flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. So here we can see, he makes an utter end of this place. Right? Okay, so therefore we have this Nineveh that gets destroyed here. So, deswegen haben wir diese Nineveh, die hier zerstört wird. And there must be also therefore a Nineveh that gets saved. Right? Es muss auch irgendwo ein Nineveh geben, die gerettet wird. And yeah, I would suggest it's the story of Jonah. Ich würde okay. vorschlagen, dass es die Geschichte in Jonah ist. Yeah, because Jonah, what do they do? In, in Jonah, was tun sie? Yeah, they repent. Yeah, they repent. Okay. Well, it tells you later that they got, got destroyed later. Yes, yes, the story. Also, sie werden später zerstört. Yes, but, uh, but they illustrate in this particular story those that repented and therefore got not smitten and destroyed. Okay. Aber in dieser Geschichte, sie stellen diejenigen da, die Buße getan haben, deswegen nichts zerstört. Ich habe die Matthew 12, in Vers 41. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Jonah is a good story to use, but because it's not marking the end, but Matthew 12, and verse 41 shows it. In Matthäus 12, and Vers 41. Okay. It's like this, I of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to Matthew 12. And maybe let's begin in verse 31 to get the context. So, fangen wir in Vers 31 an. 39. 39, Verzeihung, an, um Kontext zu verschaffen. It says, But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The man of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Yes. So here we can see yeah, they are accounted to be the righteous, right? And opposite to them were the wicked. So here can we see that they as gerecht angerechnet werden. Das Gegenteil davon werden denn die Bösen. In the next verse we have Egypt also. Ja, nächsten Vers 42 gibt es auch Ägypten erwähnt. Yes. The Queen of the South shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and behold, the greater than Solomon is Sheba. Yeah, Queen of Sheba. Yes. Königin von Sheba. Yes. Okay, so, anyways, could everybody see that there's always these two... Groups. So konnte jeder sehen, dass es immer diese zwei äh, Seiten oder zwei Gruppen gab. So it's one nation, but always two classes of worshippers. Eine, eine Nation, aber immer zwei Klassen der Anbeter da drin. Okay, so and this obviously will help to understand certain scriptures now, maybe in a different context than before. Das wird uns besser helfen, gewissen Schriftstellen äh, zu verstehen als zuvor. Is it also this Eden passage? Sorry? Eden? 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 Yeah. That there's a wicked Eden and a good Eden? Or? Eden's not really a nation, a nation or a city. Mm. 
And you must show that Eden gets destroyed somewhere. I don't know if you can give a story in mind. Uh, okay. I mean, Eden is not really a nation, right? It's not a nation or a city, so I don't think so. But if you can show that Eden gets destroyed somewhere, then this would be a proof. But we have the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. This is the tape of it, but it's not the same Okay, good. All right, then. Any questions left? So, are you mind Fragen dazu? Okay. Then I would say. Then would I say. We can close. That's very close. Let's have our prayer. That's our prayer.